What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 14. Season 14, episode one, The Edge of Fashion. So I'm just going to give, you know, my quick thoughts and opinions about this first episode. And then, um, yeah, that'll be it. So we start off with um, Candy. Candy is back. Candy looks good. Uh, she's still with Todd. She's still trying to stack her paper. Not much happened with Candy in this particular episode other than, you know, her just trying to get along with everybody and, you know, being that listening board for everybody not much happened with Candy. Moving on to Kenya. Kenya is back. She's looking good. Uh, somebody asked her about her divorce from Mark, and she said that the divorce is still pending. And I'm like, girl, why is your divorce still pending? You were only married to Mark for like a hot minute. And y'all had like a couple of really good days, and the rest were all bad days. Why is this divorce still pending? You people obviously do not want to be together. Um, she says that he's the one that's dragging his feet. He's the one that refuses to sign the papers. But she says she herself, emotionally, she has moved on from Mark. And she just wants this divorce final. I don't know what happens when a divorce is pending and one party is taking their time as far as signing the papers. Um, it seems like it's, it tries, they want to start it off as an uncontested divorce. So both parties will sign and then you present it to the judge to finalize and then it's done. But if one party is not wanting to sign or they're dragging their feet about signing, then um, just, you know, go ahead and set a date for court or set a date for trial and have the judge make this divorce final, whether he's Mark is ready or not. Uh, there's no reason why uh, people who are married for how long was it like a year, if that for people who are married for such a short time for this divorce to be pending as long as it's been pending. Like, what the hell, Kenya? Um, it, it doesn't make any sense. Y'all didn't have a lot. Y'all didn't stay together long enough to grow any assets together. So I know it can't be money. There's no way that, you know, he's going to be requesting any kind of spousal support or you're requesting spousal support. Y'all weren't married long enough. So come on, let's get to it. Um, Kenya was also on Dancing with the Stars. I had no idea because I don't watch Dancing with the Stars, but she was on it. When the episode started, she was actually rehearsing with her partner, Brandon. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, there's a scene where she's back at her house and she's in the kitchen cooking with her daughter, Brooklyn, and Brandon is there. And it's like, what the hell is your dancing partner doing at your house? I don't know if this is the guy that she dances with on the show or if this was just like a dancing coach for her to practice while she's in Atlanta filming Real Housewives of Atlanta. I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand why this guy was in her house. Are they dating? Uh, is this what they do at Dancing with the Stars? You know, your, your dancing coach or your dancing partner, you know, just pops into your, you know, comes over for breakfast. Like, I didn't understand what the hell was happening there. But we get to see Little Miss Brooklyn. Brooklyn is absolutely adorable. I cannot believe that she is two years old. And she talks the way she does. She talks like a five-year-old or six-year-old. She articulates so well. She doesn't do that baby talk. You can understand exactly what she's saying. That girl is going places. Kenya, your daughter is going places. She's absolutely adorable. Then we move on to Sheree. Sheree is back and, um, yeah, she's back and she, she came with the mess. She definitely came with the mess. Sheree knows what it takes to stay, but you know, there's a very fine line between being interesting enough to stay on the show and then just, just being vicious. So Sheree, let's try to stay on the right side of that line. So, Sheree is back. Her jailbird boyfriend, uh, Tyrone, has finally been released. It seems like he was incarcerated for like a very long time. They said that she's been waiting for him for years. He's finally released. He's paroled in Philadelphia. So she takes a couple of trips per month to go visit him in Philadelphia. Um, I think it was Kenya that asked her, you know, so what was it like being with him for the first time after, you know, waiting for him for so many years, you know, like being intimate with him. And Kenya, I mean, uh, Sheree said that it was quick. I bet it was after, you know, he was gone for like how five, six, seven, 10 years I don't know uh, but then she says that she has put a lid on the cookie jar there's going to be no more cookies for Tyrone because she wants to see if they really have what it takes to sustain a relationship and the girls were like well aren't you worried about him you know being with other women while you have locked up the cookie jar and Sheree was like you know she's got that wop so she ain't worried whatever 
Moving on to Drew Sedora. So Drew Sedora is back. I didn't really care for Drew last season. Um, so hopefully this season, you know, I can see a better side to Drew. So far, I kind of do. Uh, she definitely has uh, upgraded her wigs, it seems like, in this first episode. Because her hair, to me, looked really nice in this episode. Uh, Drew is still going through some issues with Ralph. Last season, they're having some serious marital problems. There was an incident where he took off, didn't even tell her where he was going. He was gone for a few days. Then he comes back home like everything is hunky-dory. And she's like, where the hell have you been? And he tells her that he went to Tampa, Florida, of all places. Never told her when he left left didn't tell her why he was going didn't tell her where he was going until he came back and she had to like pry this information out of him so Ralph is a very strange fellow I, Ralph to me seems like someone who has a plethora of secrets and once she finds out what these secrets are uh Drew Sidora will be right behind Kenya um headed to uh divorce court because there's just something about Ralph. I just don't understand why he has to be so secretive. So in this episode, she tells us that the Tampa issue was still not resolved. She's still very salty about that. But then there's like this whole other issue with the assistant. There are some um, very suspicious texts that were going on between Ralph and his assistant. He hired a female assistant who's, I guess, I'm assuming she's attractive. And Drew is not very comfortable with that, but Ralph doesn't give a damn. So he tries to make it like, you know, she's just my assistant. It's very platonic. There's nothing going on. But Drew had come across some weird text where this assistant was offering to give Ralph a massage. And it seemed like he wanted to take her up on that offer. And... How do you explain that? Why is your assistant trying to put her hands on you to give you a massage? And she's supposed to be assisting you with your business. And Ralph acts like, pretends like he doesn't understand what the big deal is, but he knows exactly what the big deal is. I just don't get these people. I don't understand their marriage. Like why would Drew want to stay with someone who is like this, who is so secretive, who, who's so, who acts strange on purpose? I don't understand. But then there's also like a side to Ralph that is, you know, kind of okay. Like he's a great stepfather. Um, the way that they handled the whole situation with Drew, uh, Drew's son meeting his biological father and how supportive Ralph was with that. I thought that was really nice. Um, but as far as them two together, I don't get it. I don't understand their marriage at all. I don't understand it. So they're still having issues and they're still trying to work through this. They're in counseling. They're actually in counseling, but I don't understand. You need to get your money back. If being in counseling has you where you're at now with your marriage, like absolutely no improvement. Like it got worse than it was last year. Last year, he took a trip that he couldn't really explain. This year, there's like an, there's an actual female now involved. And I, I don't know. I don't know what's happening there, but you know, we'll see as the season progresses. So moving on to, um, a new cast member by the name of Sonia. So Sonia, I'm not familiar who this woman is, but supposedly she is a four time gold Olympic gold medalist winner. Uh, she's won the gold four times. And in her confessional, the producer said, isn't it three golds and one bronze? And she was like, "Uh, uh it is four gold medals. And I, I don't count the bronze. So she's very proud of her achievements as she should be. I mean, that's amazing. Amazing. Four gold medals. Absolutely amazing. Um, she's married to Aaron Ross, who goes by Ross. They've been married about almost 20 years. I think they said like 17, 18 years. They have one son together. And we find out in this episode that her husband, Ross, wants another child. But she doesn't know if she wants to take that step yet because she said that when she had her son, her husband basically kind of like checked out. He really wasn't present. I didn't understand if she meant he wasn't present in the marriage at all, or he wasn't present with like baby duties. But because of that issue, she's hesitant about having another baby because she doesn't want to repeat the same mistakes or the same problems that they had when they had the first baby. 
She is from Jamaica. Her parents live with her. Her dad is like a true Rastafarian. He's got the dreads. He's got the look. The way he talks, they have to put subtitles on the on the television screen because he talks out. You know, he talks very um, like in that Jamaican dialect, and it's really hard to understand him. Her mother is gorgeous. Her mother is absolutely gorgeous, and she looks a lot like her mom. So her parents also stay with them. Um, her husband, by the way, is also a. Did she say NFL? Champ the Super Bowl. Yeah, his team won the Super Bowl. I think she said um he's won the Super Bowl twice. So these are some very very accomplished people. Very accomplished people. So I hope this so I hope this show doesn't make Sonya look like a damn fool because she has accomplished a lot. I mean, to be at the Olympics and to win four medals, you know, you worked really hard your whole entire life to get to that position. Don't let this show sully your reputation, please, Sonia. So Sonia was actually brought in by Drew. She's a friend of Drew. And that's how, you know, she made her way into the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So Miss Marlo finally has gotten a peach. I don't understand what took Marlo so long to get a peach. I know she's wanted one. I don't understand why Bravo hesitated for so long to give her a peach because every time that Marlo made an appearance, I couldn't get enough of her. I love Marlo on this show. Um, and I never understood why they never gave this girl a peach, but they finally did. Whatever happened in the past is water under the bridge now. So let's just move forward. So now she has her peach She's an official cast member and she brought it. She brought the drama. Uh, Marlo knows exactly what to do to keep us interested. She's not going to play it safe, which, I, you know, obviously that's what we love about Marlo. She's going to say exactly what's on her, on her mind, and she doesn't really care what anybody has to say. So Marlo, it's always been like a mystery on how she sustains her lifestyle because she's always decked out in like, you know, the best of the best as far as her attire, her fashion, her clothes. It's always, you know, uh, name brand the top, top, top name brand, you know, international labels like Prada, uh, Gucci, Dior. I mean, it's real stuff, real heavy, heavy, heavy hidden stuff. So people are always like, okay, well, how do you make your money? There's just been, there's been this running rumor that, you know, the gentlemen pay for her time. Uh, that's one way that she probably makes her money. But in this episode, it seems like, I don't know how legit this is, but it seems like she has her own business and it's called La Archive. And it is a business where she, her own clothes that she has bought, that she has owned. Uh, she, it's a collection of her clothes and her accessories and whatnot. And she rents this out. She rents out her clothes. And she says she only rents, it, rents out her clothes to uh, people in the industry, celebrities, uh, movies, movie sets, television sets. So, and she pays like, I mean, she charges a pretty penny for wearing her clothes, for people to rent her clothes. Now, I can, I, I guess I kind of understand if she's renting it out to like, I don't know, movies and TV sets, I guess. I just don't understand why someone would pay this kind of money to wear someone else's used clothes. Um, that's the part that I was kind of lost on. For example, she has, there was a, a belt. I think it was like a Christian Dior belt that Foxy Brown had worn. And... She paid, Marlo paid $4,000 for that belt, for this Christian Dior belt. And she rented it out for $1,000 per day. So Foxy Brown paid her $1,000 to wear a belt per day. <laughs> wow crazy but you would think that I guess you know instead of you know I guess I guess this is what people do because I know that you know celebrities will wear stuff and then you know like fashion designers will loan their stuff to celebrities or whatever uh, but it's for exposure for the fashion designer for their uh, for their work to be exposed and the celebrity doesn't really pay for that and then they they will return it back, but it's like okay, I will wear this. I will lend, I will let you wear my piece for free, so that you can advertise my work, and hopefully, from you appearing on the red carpet at whatever event, I will garner more business. I don't understand 
the purpose of renting clothes from someone when she herself is not even a fashion designer and you have to pay her to wear her clothes and you're paying a lot of money. Uh, maybe Fox Brown was like, why would I pay $4,000 for a Dior belt when I could rent it out for a day for a thousand? I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me, but this is her business. She also has an Yves Saint Laurent satchel, Muse satchel, that she paid $3,200 for, and she rents it out for $800 a day. She has a Valentino gown that she wore at her 35th birthday that she bought for $15,000, and she rents it for $3,750 a day. Who is wearing these clothes? Now, so I guess it makes sense, you know, for a movie set or a television set, if they don't have a costume designer, which a lot of them do, <laughs> or maybe this is where they get, I don't, I don't understand, but this is how supposedly she's making her money. So she has an event where she is going to showcase her pieces and hopefully, you know, she, She's hoping to, I guess, either sell or have people who are going to want to rent her pieces because she says that she's planning on getting money back from this event. The event cost her $40,000 to put together and she wants to make $120,000 at least from the sale or the rental of these pieces. I have no idea. So she has this event. Uh, the event was supposed to start at 7 Everybody showed up and Marlo didn't show up until nine o'clock. But anyway, so the women, they arrive at the event, Candy, Sheree, Kenya, Drew, and Sonia, they all arrive at the event. Um, they're looking around and they see that the pieces are on mannequins and they're questioning like, okay, why does this, doesn't she have like actual models wearing the pieces? Kenya questioned why wasn't there like an actual runway show for these pieces? That would have been a lot better. So you can see, you know, on an actual human being, how they would look, how the clothes would move. You know, she doesn't even have a catalog with the pieces so that you can at least, you know, take it home with you and peruse the catalog. If you're trying to make up your mind, if you want to rent some of these pieces. So they're basically like, you know, Kenya really is like dogging her out. Well, Sheree takes that right back to uh, Marlo and tells her that Sheree and Sonia and tells Marlo, hey, they're talking crap about your event. Um, Kenya is telling is saying that it's really basic. It's not that, you know, there's no food because that's something else that Kenya said. Where's the food? How come we're not sitting down for dinner service? It's just some um, um, uh, hors d'oeuvres being passed around. So Kenya had a lot to say about the event and Sheree took it all right back to Marlo. So of course, Marlo, she's not going to let that slide. So after she makes her little speech, she, you know, sashays on to Kenya, Candy and Drew. And she was like, I heard you had a lot to say about my event, how it's really basic and blah, blah, blah. And so she's like, you know what, this is how they do it in Paris, but you basic women wouldn't know that. This is how it's done in, in Paris. They put the clothes on the mannequins. It's like a gallery event. People come in and you look at the clothes that are on the mannequin and it's very quiet and they have, you know, a string, uh, a string instrument band playing. This is how it's done um, in, in Paris and Milan, so on and so forth. So, you know, then she goes back and forth with the women. You know, it was funny. It was a cute little scene. Um, Candy was like, I didn't say anything bad about your stuff. You know, keep me out of it. I didn't say anything bad about your stuff. And then Kenya was like, she was telling Sheree and Sonia, oh, okay, so y'all went back and told Marlo what we said about her, but y'all completely left out what y'all said about the event. Okay, I see how this goes. So it was just, you know, whatever. And uh, another thing to note is that Drew and Kenya made up because they were not in the best of places last season. Um, Kenya really didn't see it for Drew, had a lot to say about Drew. She called her a stray, thought that was funny. Uh, so they've made up and they're gonna try to start fresh, try to start all over with their friendship and hopefully it works. So all in all, um, I don't miss, I didn't feel the need, I wasn't like, oh my God, where's, um, where's Nini? I really want Nini back or where the hell is Portia? I didn't feel that way. I really didn't miss Cynthia. Cynthia, I love you girl, but you know, not much was happening with Cynthia for like the past five years other than her getting married. So it was a nice little episode. Uh, I'm glad to see Sonia. I think I'm going to like Sonia. And um, obviously Marlo, how can you not like Marlo? She's going to make the show what it is. And, um, 
And of course, you know, Kenya will always be Kenya. So that is my little short review for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Thank you for joining me if you made it this far. I really do appreciate it. On your way out, please don't forget to rate the video and please don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to you later. Bye.